inverse kinematics is given the end effector pose, find the joint positions. So if you know the X, Y, Z, roll pitch yaw of the end effector, then what are the joint angles or lengths that it takes to get there? Similarly for forward kinematics, assume each joint in the chain has one degree of freedom. Otherwise, it would be two joints. This is more difficult than forward kinematics for serial robots, but it's easier than forward kinematics for parallel robots because there are fewer possible solutions. The goal of inverse kinematics is find all solutions to the final transformation. So whatever theta one, theta two, theta three, all the way to theta n, however many joints there are, number is n, equals the final homogeneous transformation matrix. So the method is to take the first three rows, the ones that have the orientation and the position, and solve for all the d and theta that make it the answer correct. So the result of these is 12 equations, because there will be one equation for each spot in the matrix, three rows, four columns, and then n unknowns, where n is the number of joints. Closed form analytical solutions are ideal. Sometimes the robot is super complicated and you have to solve it numerically. But the different cases are no solution, which would be that the point is outside of the robot's workspace. It can't reach the point no matter how much it stretches. Or there could be one solution. The point is on the edge of the workspace. So the edge of the whole sphere that the robot can touch, the robot would be pretty much stretched out. There could also be multiple solutions if it's a point inside the workspace, so the robot might be able to approach it from different angles. Or impossible solutions. These are inside the workspace, but the robot, for some reason, can't reach that spot. Maybe it's too close to itself, um, or it's just joint limited in some way that it can't touch that particular location with the desired orientation. A manipulator is solvable if all sets of joint variables for any pose can be found. So you need to be able to find the answers for every single joint for a specific pose for it to be completely solvable. All single chain six degree freedom robots, um, combinations of Revolut and prismatic joints are solvable at least numerically. So you could use MATLAB even if you couldn't solve it by hand. And in that case, you would use the Jacobian and resolve rates to minimize the joint motion. More on that in a future video. Analytical solutions for the 6R robot are only possible if it has a three-axis intersecting wrist because you would need to be able to get the um, one set of angles, like theta 1, theta 2, theta 3 from the position, and then the other set of angles, theta 4, 5, 6, from the orientation. For other types of robots, you can have two solutions, you can have 16 solutions. It depends like what combination of different joints there are in the robot. Redundant robots have more degrees of freedom than needed, so more unknowns than, than equations. This would be like a robot that has more than three joints that moves two-dimensionally, or one that has more than six joints that moves three-dimensionally or that has more than one joint that moves on only one dimension. So these have infinity solutions inside of the workspace because there's an extra joint. So it could be whatever it needs to or any possible value. Then they have one solution on the workspace edge when the robot is completely stretched out or zero solutions outside of the workspace where it can't touch at all. We'll do an example of the 6R serial arm with a three axis wrist. Most industrial robots have six degree of freedom, but many of them have a three axis intersecting wrist. So we can decouple the equations into position and orientation. So position, you can see here, the position vector goes from the origin of the base frame to the center of the wrist, that's PC. And then we can find PE, which is the tip of the end effector relative to the base. So we'll use the position of the wrist center to get theta 1, 2, and 3, and then the orientation to get theta 4, 5, and 6. So here, P 
PC is the center of the wrist and PE is the end effector tip. The steps to solve this are calculate PC. If we're given L6 and we're given that orientation, we can get to the, from the end effector to the wrist center then use that point to find theta 1, 2, and 3. After that, we can, if, if you have theta 1, 2, and 3, you can calculate the rotation matrix that got you to the joint center. And then from there, you, you, if you know the final matrix, which you would know from the transformation, and you know the rotation matrix that you just calculated to the wrist center, then you can get that rotation matrix that goes from joint three to joint six from those two. And then finally, use that rotation along with oral angles and DH parameters to find theta four, five, and six. So step one is calculate PC from PE, the rotation, and the wrist length. So that is shown here. This is pretty much just vector math. So this vector equals this vector minus the one that goes here to here. And that's a minus because of the direction that the rotation went. Then use PC to find theta one, theta two, and theta three. So you can project it onto the xy plane since theta 1 rotates around the vertical axis and then it's pretty easy to get theta 1. It's just the inverse tangent of x and y. But then for theta 2 and theta 3, you'll have to use some tricks since those joints both point in the same direction. Then calculate the rotation matrix from theta 1, 2, and 3. So this is just the rotation from frame zero to frame one, one to frame two, two to frame three. Since it's current frame, we post multiply. And then you put those, multiply out those all together and get this final matrix. Then to get R36, we do what is sort of like a division. So we would multiply by the, the original R36, six zero by the inverse of R three zero, but for rotation matrix, inverse and transpose are the same thing. So it's sort of like you're dividing R six by R three, except that it's matrices, so you, you, it's, you really just multiply by the inverse. And finally, for the last step, you need to get theta 4, 5, and 6. So you use that rotation matrix, R6, 3, that you just found, and ZYZ Euler angles. So this gets equations 228 and 233 in the book. Then R6, 3 in the DH parameters you can use to get the final rotation matrix. So you, then you'll have to set these equations equal and solve. Um, from, so the R3, 6 with the DH parameters and the R3, 6 with the Euler angles, you set those two matrices equal to each other and then you can solve out. So that looks super complicated, but if you look at this, you can actually break it down smaller. So this bottom right corner only has theta five in it. It's cosine of theta five. So you can just use inverse cosine to get theta five. And then once you know theta five, then you can plug that into these two to get theta six and plug it into these two on the right column to get theta four. So then you end up not actually having to use these other more complicated ones in the top left side of the matrix. So this yields actually 16 different solutions. So there are many ways that the robot could reach that certain pose, like lots of different joint angles that would get to that answer. So in this case, if you want the robot to reach a certain solution, you would solve this in MATLAB and bias it a little bit 
um, by putting in some initial guesses for the angles that are kind of close to what you think they should be.